Um, welcome to uh, the first week of portrait painting with oil paints. Um, oil paints are a awesome, um, an awesome medium. Nothing paints like oils. Um, the technique that I did with my uh, self portrait in acrylics um, came close in certain um, um, ways and methods um, that, we, that you can use. The problem with oil painting is, is that there are so many cool techniques to use that it's sometimes kind of hard to um, pick which one is your favorite. Um, me being a classic portrait painter, I love, love, love the Flemish way. Um, We'll get in that in a second. Um, tonight, though, we're going to do something different. Um, because these classes are more meant for beginners to step into, I'm going to do the beginner's technique of oil paint. I'm going to use beginner oil paints and stuff like that um, to use a dry brush technique to do the portrait. Um, to begin with, you need something to paint on. You can paint basically on, with oil paint. You can paint on anything. Um, I've got one here. That one's done on uh, head on paper, uh, heavy uh, vellum. I'm still working on that one. Uh, is on uh, the, the uh, this one's done on a uh, canvas panel. Uh, if it looks in the back, actually see the word. Um, both done in two different techniques. Um, this one's done some wet and wet, and it takes about three days in between to dry, and the smell will stay on it. Although this one is done on paper, which makes the drying time actually almost the same as acrylics. Uh, you will have some bleed through there, if you can see that. So you got to be careful with that. Uh, today I'll be using canvas board. So, uh, partly it's because I needed something that has a bit of a tooth to it. So I am actually uh, refurbishing an older uh, canvas board that I got. I got a whole pack of them from somebody else that was selling them. So, because uh, I needed something that had tooth on it. If you're going to dry brush, you need something that has a little bit of a, a tooth to it. Um, so I'm using this today. Um, the face, by the way, there's on my blog. Um, the links are on. So if you guys need to blog anything in between, uh, feel free. Uh, on my blog, this is a template. I scan it in. Feel free to use it. It's a royalty free fit. Um, so we're going to do that. But you can, and in, in, uh, the technique that I'm going to show you is meant to go on watercolor paper because it the drying time will be way less, which means that you can finish it in one go and go ahead. And the end result will actually kind of look like a pencil, um, pencil drawing if you do it in black and white. We're going to use uh, colors. Just a few, and it will be mostly uh, uh, monochrome. Um, the techniques that I favor with oil paints, um, the Flemish one is is my favorite. I will use that for the most classical portraits. Um, you draw all your face on the canvas. You ink that with Indian ink or any other waterproof ink. Then you will go over that with your burnt umber mix, and then you'll turn that one into a black and white and gray tone underpainting. And you go over that with glazes and glazes and glazes and glazes and glazes and glazes, and, glazes, and then you finish it off with some solid colors at the end. That will give you the softest, most classic looking oil painting portrait there is. But between all the different layers it needs to dry which means that it would be almost impossible to teach something like that on here because it would be 10 minutes of painting week of drying 10 minutes of painting week of drying so I decided to go ahead and dry brush because with dry brushing you're using so little paint that it should be tacky to the painter with literally within like 10-15 minutes that it gives you enough play time to blend in the colors really well. It still might not go anywhere. You know, um, I have not used this technique in years on canvas. We tend to do it, you know, with acrylics. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and have fun with it. I use just regular old 
little tubies that you can get. There's a mix of reefs and uh, artist lofts. Colors that I'm going to use for this one. Um, mine is going to be mostly brown with um, with some red added to it. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use titanium white. I'm going to use lamp black. The reason why I'm using lamp black, by the way, is because lamp black is closer to blue. I want to get rid of the whole warm red with my blacks. Titanium white, just any white will do. Um, I'm going to use some uh, yellow ochre to make my darkest brown, which is my uh, my burnt umber, less dark. I'm going to use uh, burnt sienna mixed with this one to give the highlight to that. Um, I'm going to add a little red to it just to warm everything up a little bit. And believe it or not, the reefs had a, uh, a flesh tint. So I wanted to show you that, if you're going to use it or not, you can. Um, my never is going to get used because I, I, I mix my own. Um, I got a thing of linseed oil right here. Uh, linseed oil is good for everything and anything, except working in proper light skin tones. Linseed oil has a, uh, a tint to it. It has a yellowish brownish tint to it. Which means if you're using white, it'll turn what? Brown. Exactly. Mineral spirits. Mineral spirits are awesome. They blend your colored pencils. That smells nice. It um, it will blend your um, your mineral spirits. But be careful. Um, this technique right here is supposed to look like lace. And I came pretty close, I think, unless if I clean it up. Um, um, it'll run a little bit if you use too much, so we're not going to do that. You can need something to put your linseed oil in. I got these little things. Um, part of the reason why I have these is because, well, you know, I've been oil painting so long, and you'll get some good supplies if you do it more often. Um, my uh, tempered glass palette, and these little thingies have actually have like clips on them. That hello, come on. Work. That clip on the side, which means I can just hold my palette like any good little Bob Ross painter would, and uh, need some paper towels because we're gonna scrub off the paint. Don't use um, don't use the baby wipes because the paper wipes are wet. You don't want that on your uh, paintbrush when we're dry brushing. We don't want anything on there except some thinner and some paint and then just scrub it off from here. Um, these brushes are kind of beyond our prime. This is kind of a thin one. This will be my detail brush. And they used to be all longer. These used to be just plain old acrylic brushes. These are from the sat. Let's see. This is a, I believe this is an artist loft sat. And I think these two came from Walmart during the plate craft. Uh, things. The problem is of the, the the reason why I picked them is that if you can see that, I don't know if you can. If I put it on the camera, it might help. Okay. Well, it's still bendable, but it's very stiff. Okay, and it's soft. This is what you want for dry brushing. Again, still relatively bendable, but pretty stiff. Um, you don't want it like a bristle brush. Because unless you want the brush, the the the, the brush strokes in it, uh, with uh, dry brushing you really don't want to. Um, so, but I'm going to use mainly these two. Um, and by the end, they will be gone. They will be done, and they will probably look like something like this. Look at that. See that? This one's just gone. It can probably stand up by itself. Not close enough. Okay, um, okay. Grab an eraser. Now, if you paint with oils and stuff like that, you, uh, it'll, it'll muck up your, uh, 
your um, with the pencil it will muck up your paint so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to very lightly yeah so what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to mix a brown with some red um, I'm going to take my I'm going to take my, uh, what's it, burnt sienna. Yeah, I'm going to take my burnt sienna, and this time I can use the linseed oil. I'm going to take some burnt sienna by itself, and um, this is what you want with dry brushing. I put some paint on my brush, and I'm going to take most of it off. Good thing about this is I could technically take a white and go back over and lighten it up. Um, I want a little bit of red in there. Just a little bit. So, take some color on my brush. Take my thingy. This will also let you check the color. To see your mixed color, how, how it looks like. There we go. That's more what I want it. And you can see it's as good as dry to begin with. So if you mess up, no big deal. Let it dry, go over it. Okay, the, the, with this, you might get a little bit in trouble with uh, mixing colors wrong. Uh, you might want to spend some extra time thinking about what colors you want. and um, where you want them before you start doing this. And remember, because we're painting, nothing is set in stone. The lighter you go with your brush, better it is. Okay? And flare it out. You can actually use, if you want, you can use a paper towel. And take a whole bunch up. Okay. This would be a good first layer. Let's see. I can put my hand over it and fine. Okay, I I'm keep my eraser handy because I am going to look for spots that I'm going to be working on. And I'm actually going to go over that. You will see the uh, pencil lines going through it. And because they're oils, they're still tactile. See how that blends? Can you see that? Do I have to zoom that in for a second? All right. I'm going to zoom in on that nose. Right there. See where the two colors? How well it still blends? But if I run my finger over it, it's dry. I'm going to clean my brush because it's picking up so many other colors. Uh, if you can, if you can afford it, or if you have them, use as many of the brushes as you can. Um, if I'm really seriously going for a painting day, I will actually get different brushes for different mixes. And remember, I can still go over it, and I will go still over it. I am now looking for shapes. Looking for shapes that I'm uh, that I uh, that I can block in. Colors will go over each other, lighten them up, and you will have to maybe sometimes have to go over. This technique is meant mostly for uh, for black and gray. And this will turn out a little harder. You will 
have to like uh, the edges won't be as sharp and as you're used to so what you'll have to do is later on what you can do if you want to is you can come back in okay, the more thinner and other stuff that you're adding to your paint longer it dries but the longer it takes for it to dry okay you don't want to do that Mix a little bit of brown in with my black. Okay, I'm gonna now do the lips. Uh, I'm gonna use a little red. Turn that into kind of like a pink. I didn't even clean my brush in between. It's a little muddier than I wanted to. But, oh, yeah. Take a lighter version of that. We'll go around here. lighter color even still if I wanted to or just press less and you get the light color of the same thing I can uh, I'll show you my palette in a minute after just you know just a little bit of painting already and I can actually get a uh, a darker color already over it because if this is good as dry. Um, keep focusing on certain areas. Look, I already forgot the pupil. I mean, the hell, I only I did half the eye. Let's bring this one all the way down. Sometimes you need a little bit more red, sometimes you need a little bit more brown, but you'll figure it out that it is actually a great color coordination for certain areas. And this will not get you all the each beats little, humongously little details. I'm looking for that, yeah. Clean up the top lip a little bit. This is kind of not the color I wanted. So I'm just taking a lighter pink. And I'm actually apparently making it darker. Way darker. So I'm taking a paper towel. Get the original off. Or the second coat off. Use my handy dandy eraser. On there. I'm uh, using a little bit more linseed oil here to spread it out, but I'm still not wanting it too much because wait, it will take a long, long time to dry. So I want to really, really spread that out. I just want to layer on it. I can. I can already go over the background and very lightly. All right, I'm gonna have some hair coming out here 
and I'm going to have some hair coming out from over here. Uh, actually, curve like this. Chin, stop, cheek, coming in. Excuse me. This will take a little bit to dry, but that's okay because you know we can. Uh, and I'm gonna incorporate her. Her. Uh, Part of the eye that I just uh, pulled down this part, incorporate that into the thing right there, the shadow. This one will go out just a little more like that. And I want to have it come out straight, almost about here, and curve inwards of the rod there. All right, on it. Feel free to agree with me. So now we are getting more of a wet and wet technique. See that bumping a dark color against the light will make it pop. I started adding the shadow colors from left to right, and I kept doing it. I kept every time I needed this part to be darker. I kept going this way, I kept going that way, I kept going that way. If I don't, you're just going to mess up your lights on one side. So you, you really want to just keep going from one side. Same thing if, if you do the cheek. Don't start going like over here and then a little bit over here. Just try working that way so it gets all smooth in one go. Now this will take a few days to dry. Slightly dry brushing over that. That is definitely something that I enjoy doing. It uh, it works really well with that. So I'm mostly done with the face for now. I want to let it kind of dry a little bit before I dry brush some more on it. That's better. The reason why I don't care if they're completely round or not is because they're gonna have highlights on them and shadows underneath and all that. Um, they are going to get, however, darker as I go to my left. It's pure how the, the light is catching them. And there is really no trick to uh, to you know do from up to down 
or whatever. That's that's literally up to you. The only th good thing is about oil paints is that it uh, it'll cool real quickly, and if you practice that, you got those little flicks. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So it is actually quite easy to, to make a nice looking hair with oil paint. Okay, I'm gonna have to use a harder brush for that. Hold on for just a second while I find one. Anyway, um, if you use it like almost like ink, it's gonna take you. Uh, it's gonna take it longer to dry. So that's kind of up to you. Um, as I mentioned, I was just because uh, I'm, I'm. I won't say I'm strapped for time, but I don't want to spend too much time on everything. So I am. Not using anything. That's why I use the dry brush technique because it works the best. Soften my brush up a little bit. Um, if you use too much mineral spirit, you're not going to be able to uh, to dry brush with it. Anyway, I'm going to do the the uh, the feather right here. So what I'm going to be using is I'm going to almost as dry as my brush can be. And it's a almost a, a, a taupe color, and I'm gonna make motions like this, like this, flicking motions, flick, 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 flick. And because the pen is still wet underneath, it'll pick that up. I'm not going to worry about the inside. I'm, I'm kind of painting the outside of the, the feather more. Just kind of roughly thinking about the shape I want. And these little lines are good. You want those little lines to show up there. That's good. To the feather itself. All right, there we go. And you can still see the outlines of it right here. Okay, and as I go along, I'm gonna pick up some of my red brownish colors. I think my red in there. My white, my pure, pure, pure white. Oops, sorry about that. I just hit my head on the lamp. And brushing my white, 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 white. <clears throat> 